first off, how many of you have spent any amount of time in the last week thinking about your future career? Yes. Asking yourself things like, what am I going to do when I grow up? What is that job going to be? How am I going to get that job? Is it going to pay well? Is it going to be stable? What if I told you you're worrying about all of the wrong things? And that you shouldn't be thinking about the job that you're going to get or how you're going to get it, but that you should be thinking about how you're going to create your future job. So as technology is starting to increasingly take over jobs and automation is, is, is a, a real thing, with that is an increasing opportunity for each and every one of us to carve out a new space, to create a new role for ourselves, to create our future careers. So meet Lauren. Lauren's an 11-year-old girl from Calgary, and she's started a company called Robots Are Fun. So she's taken her workshops with us at Girls Learning Code, learning anything from game making to web making to wearable technology. And so she, as a normal 11-year-old girl, loves to play with her sister, sports, dance, this and that. But she also really, really loves technology. And she realized through talking with her friends that they didn't understand how computers worked or how robots worked or how games worked. And so she's created this company that operates in Calgary, is a thriving business, teaching other kids like her and teachers how to introduce them to technology. So this girl is not even in high school and she's an entrepreneur. Meet Nancy. Nancy came to Ladies Learning Code in 2012, the degree in music, really struggling to find consistent work that she really enjoyed. And so she took a workshop with us, a Drupal workshop, um, made a social network for cats, which is not really practical, um, but what it did is it sparked something in her. And so she took more workshops with us, learned to code, eventually took a nine-week boot camp around technology. And so now she, A, teaches people in her own city in Montreal how to code, but B, she works full-time as a front-end web developer, building and, and working on many of the sites that we use every single day. So coding has really propelled her. It completely changed her career trajectory in just a short period of time. Meet AJ. AJ's up there in the top. Um, AJ is a curious kid, like any other. But what AJ is different about AJ, who, who takes a lot of our programs here in Toronto, is that he looks out and he sees problems as opportunities for things to solve. And so AJ has worked with us, learned to code, learned 3D modeling, wearable technology, and he's actually already started to develop and commercialize products in his life. Um, so his first product on his site is the Stacky. It's this um, multi-purpose tool that can allow you to, you know, put your laptop on it. You can like practice your balance on it. Um, you know, the idea isn't even as important as the fact that he now has the skills and the opportunity and the means to create products, solutions to problems, and, and his future career, which I think is pretty cool. Lastly, meet Sophia. She's a 12-year-old girl from Tennessee, and so last summer, Sophia's aunt was hospitalized after having an adverse reaction to a drug. And so Sophia, like any other 12-year-old girl, wanted, wanted to help. She didn't want that to happen to anyone else. She didn't want anyone else to, to suffer. And so I mean, what I would have done is host a fundraiser or you know, maybe wrote a letter to, letter to my local member of parliament. But luckily, Sophia was learning how to code. And she was actually pretty good at it. And so what she did instead was to create an algorithm which is basically like a fancy word for a recipe for computers. She created an algorithm that would help doctors diagnose before prescribing medication whether or not a person would have an adverse reaction to it. And so my story, I mean, I'm not making any medical breakthroughs and I probably won't, um, but my story is not unlike these and the countless others we see through our programs. People who are using technology to create opportunities for themselves. So in 1999, this is a little bit later than that, but in 1999 when my family got its first computer, I was hooked. I loved building things, I loved solving problems, so I spent two entire summers, my sister's here to vouch for it, two entire summers doing nothing but building with, with the computer, building websites and games. And if you would have asked me at the time what I was doing, I would have said, eh, you know, I'm making a Harry Potter sorting hat website or a blog for my friends at school. But at that time, something really transformational was happening, and I didn't even realize it. And so technology really stuck with me. I didn't pursue it as a career. I went to business school at Ivy. I went into accounting. Um, but it always stayed with me through my extracurriculars. I was building websites, working on programs. And it stayed with me when I actually ended up quitting my job in accounting to pursue something else. I wanted to do something that created impact and, and something that I could own and, and, 
and build. And so in June 2011, myself and three other women started Ladies Learning Code. We didn't know what we were getting, getting started with at the moment. We, we just knew we wanted to learn to code ourselves and we wanted to be able to build and not just consume technology. So we ran a workshop in August 2011 in Toronto. It was a JavaScript workshop. We were learning how to build a shopping cart online. That workshop sold out in seven minutes. And a month later, we, wrote, we hosted another workshop and it sold out in 30 seconds. So what that meant, two things, A, harder to get a workshop at Ladies Learning Code than tickets to a Beyonce concert. And B, there was this really intense desire and demand for other people, women and men, to, to learn to code and to build the future. So all that said, what does that, what does that mean for you? What do you need to do to take advantage of these opportunities? How can you create the future for yourselves? Answer for, for me is simple. It's, it's learning how to code. And so code, I mean, what is code? Um, it's this kind of daunting, daunting word. And, and really what it is, it boils down to is it's actually part of something bigger, which is computational thinking, which also might be a terrifying word. Um, but what computational thinking is, is actually really simple. It's how we use and solve problems through technology. So how we use technology to solve problems and how we solve problems with technology. And so coding is a part of that. Coding is the language that we use to communicate with computers. And so if you know, you may know, you may not be familiar with computers, but they're actually not smart at all. They seem like these big, really powerful things, um, but that's actually taken the work of a lot of really good marketers and some exceptional programmers to, to make it look so easy. Computers can actually only understand two things, on or off. Um, and so what it means is that it's people like us who are the ones who actually build the technology and who empower and impose on, our, on technology what makes them so great. And so technology and coding, you know, it's, it's really, it's a skill. It's a, it's a skill set and it's something that we as humans can, can shape into use for, for good. And so again, coding, language, a skill, it might seem daunting, but the good news is that many of you are already kind of coding already or at least thinking about computational thinking. And so have you ever, written a formula in Excel, maybe to sum some information. Or, yes, lots of you. Or have you done a find and replace in a Word document for a book report? You're going to the mall or a new place and you're trying to optimize what the quickest route to get somewhere is. Maybe you're flipping through a book, looking for something and trying to figure out the quickest way to find that page um, in a book. Or, you know, maybe you have weekend plans and you've got a, a bunch of conflicting things and you're trying to figure out, like, how can you optimize your schedule and, and make it all work? And so that's the underpinning of coding. You know, what happens next is translating that into a language that, that computers can understand. And that's where groups like Ladies Learning Code and, and many others in Canada and, a, and worldwide can help you learn that code. But I think another important thing to, to really emphasize is, is why learn to code? Like, you know, it's important, it can do all this great stuff, but why should all of you do that and how that's gonna help you propel yourselves into the future? I think what it comes down to for me, coding here, skip that slide, is, is coding is really a tool. And so you think to fire. Fire is a tool, fire is fire. And fire is really nothing more than just fire until us humans do something about it. And so if you think back to millions of years ago, when humans were first able to harness and to manipulate, to control, and to move fire, that was an exciting time. That was a huge turning point for us as a society. If you think about that, by being able to harness fire, what that means is that you could live in parts of the world that you couldn't live before. It means you could stay up and work beyond the sun setting. That means we went from six, eight hours a day to 16 hours a day where we could produce and, and be productive. What that means is something so simple as our food that we would have to eat raw can now be cooked which means things like starches, when cooked, can, can digest better, and we can actually harness so much energy as humans to actually output and produce more. So the opportunity to harness fire was world-changing. And I think we're there right now with code. Code on its own is just a tool. It's nothing more than a tool. But it's when us, when humans, start to work with code, with technology, with tool, and we harness it, that's when it becomes a force for change. And that's why I think each and every one of you need to learn to code. Why every single person, maybe you don't become a developer, maybe that's not your future career necessarily, 
but you understand how technology works so that you can leverage it. You can use it to be the next Nancy or Lauren or AJ. You can create the future opportunities. Is that so critical? And it's critical that each and every one of you participate because technology isn't going anywhere. Every single one of us, we can't go anywhere with it. I see technology everywhere around us. And so if the technology that we use every single day isn't built by every single one of us, if our unique creativity, empathy, emotional intelligence, if all of that isn't harnessed with technology and we aren't equally contributing, that's not how we're going to solve the world's problems. And so I think code, again, it seems daunting and it's how do you get started and it's this big thing, but it's really not. It's accessible, it's easy to get started, and the important part is not, again, necessarily becoming a developer. It's starting to understand how this tool can be harnessed, how you can use this tool for social change. And so I think about the questions I asked at the beginning, thinking about what kind of career you might have, what kind of job you might do, what you might do at that job. And I really urge you to flip that, and I urge you to think about what problems do you want to solve? How do you want to harness code for change? What tools do you want to use? And ultimately, how do you want to change the world? Thank you.